Alrighty guys, I'm Casey and welcome to a brand new video here on the channel. Would you look at that? The sun is dawning and we are off guys. We are off to Amarillo. Is this the way to Amarillo? No, it's not. This is the way. <laughs> welcome back guys. Last episode we built ourselves up a skeleton slash bone farm. Let's get away from them cows. They're awfully moody today. They're awfully moany as well. Jeez, their hoofs going everywhere. We made a skeleton farm in the last episode, guys. And what I want to focus on in this episode is something that I don't think I've ever intentionally done in Minecraft before. Guys, I want to I wanna make a villager breeder. I do. See, this is our starting village. Here, I want to have all of the kind of farms that we are going to need. I want to have our sugarcane farm, our kelp farm, slime farm. I want to have pretty much every farm that we need. And I chose this island for a very specific reason. Because I just like the skeleton farms over there. There's a spider farm over in that direction. And a zombie farm just over in that direction, I believe. And they're pretty local. So we can have all of these farms in somewhat of a local area. And I want to have pretty much all of the farms in this area. And the first one of those... Uh, and a lot of those farms are going to require iron for hoppers. And... Uh, Iron requires a villager breeder, which requires villagers, which requires an iron farm. Yeah, you get the picture. we got to go back and forth a lot. So I want to get started on the villager farm this episode. Now, we do need a villager, which we unfortunately don't have. There's a couple of ways that we can get a villager. We can go ahead and do it by curing a villager. That's certainly one way to get a villager. The second way that we can get a villager is by just transporting one here, which is probably the way that I'm going to go about it. But before I do that, I want to have a place to actually put the villagers that I transfer all the way over here. We only need two to set this farm up, so it's not that big of a deal. I'm pretty sure I can get two. There's a village not too far away when it comes to traveling in the nether, but I'll cover that a little bit later on. Let's talk about the design that I'm going to be using, because like I always try to do with my designs, is I try and make them my own in my own little way. But I'm not a redstone expert. I'm certainly not a te technical expert in Minecraft. I'm just a casual builder. So I leave the technical stuff to the technical players. And I just look up, like a lot of people do, tutorials on YouTube. And I found one by Logical Geek Boy, which I'm going to be using right here. Now, like I said, I like to modify them a bit to make them my own. I am going to change up his design a little bit just to try and put my own spin on it. Just so my video is sort of my own. But the basic principle of the design, the way that it works and functions, is definitely his design. So I'm going to leave a link to his video in the description down there if you guys want a step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm going to give you an overview tutorial. You guys will be able to get the gist of what's going on in this video, I hope. But I don't want to do it in step-by-step -step like he does because I don't want to take away from him. I think it's very important that YouTubers have their sort of like own things going on. So... The first step that I need to do is I need, to, I need to focus on a little bit of a farm. And the farm is really kind of easy. It's just your standard vanilla farm, which is 9 by 9. So I'm just going to... Yeah, this is right. This is, that, that was right. That was right. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, I think I got 9 by 9. I think I've got a 9 by 9 area. It's possible that I've overdone this a little bit by one block. But we'll find out when we fill this all in. It's not that big of a deal. And it's just your standard vanilla farm. You need to use carrots or potatoes, according to Logical Geek Boy, for this. I'm not sure if that's a hard and fast rule, if you can use wheat or not. But just for the sake of it, I'm going to stick to, cake, to cakes and carrots. Cakes and carrots, yes. Taters and carrots. So I'm going to go to the fifth block in. One, two, three, four, five. I'll take out the middle block. And that should give us our center of our farm. It looks like I did do this all correctly. And for the first time ever, I'm actually going to use a... Nope, 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 not, not an upside down slab. I'm going to use a stair. I'm going to put a pitcher of water here. And then I'm going to show you guys the important bit that you need to do sort of here before I start getting this farm into place. And start making it look a little bit pretty. Now, I don't know if my design's going to hamper the productivity of this or not. But I guess we'll find out. And then what we need is we need a composter. Now, if you're like me, I haven't crafted many composters in Minecraft. I don't, I don't know if I've even ever crafted one. Oh, yes, yes, I definitely have because I've built an iron farm. Uh, they're just slabs in a U-shape. Really easy, really simple. And the reason that we need a composter is so that our little villagers in here choose this as their workstation. I've got to hope I've got no more workstations around this area because they will try to try to latch onto that. And then I want to plant some carrots here. I've got some bones here so we can make up some more carrots. So it doesn't matter um, if you have enough carrots or not to plant an entire area because the villagers, they'll go ahead and they'll just make these carrots. But a little trick that you can use if you want to get more Use your fortune pick and you'll get a significantly more carrots than you would. Otherwise, it's just a quick way to make more carrots. Saves a little bit of um, room. So, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to start working on putting a structure around this so that we can go ahead and uh, 
start getting this to look pretty because everything is going to look pretty in this village. So I'm going to get on to that. Progress has been made, guys. We've got a building around it now that still fits with the aesthetics that we're going for in this place. And boy, I can hardly hear myself talking at the minute. I've been listening to some music really, really loud. I find listening to music helps, but I'm not going to tell you what song. You spin me right round, baby, right round like a record, baby, right round. So now that we've got this put done and we've span round and round in circles for a little bit, guys, we've got the next bit to put on here, which is to add in a couple of trap doors. Now, we just need to do this according to the video, which is right off of the central block, depending on which way we want our farm to produce villagers. Now on the foot no. Words the farm to produce villagers off in this direction. We get kind of like a hue when we're in here, like a tinge. I wonder if it's the, the glass. Now, I don't know if we need to have sunlight access to these villagers or not, but I am going to put in a glass roof just to be on the safe side. We can, we can mess around with that a little bit later on, but what I want to do is I want to bring it off to this side. So I'm just going to make a quick crafting table while we're out here. Pop one down. Swan and Trade has been just a solid friend while we've been all the way out here. And what we want to do is we want to put a solid block, well, a trapdoor block right here and then open that. And what that allow the villagers to do is walk off in this direction and fall down into the collection system. Of course, we need to get a couple of villagers in here, but I don't want to put villagers in here until we've got all of the walls on. So we want to do that. And the next thing we want to do is we want to put another trapdoor, just a block above that and leave that one open like so. Actually, no, we need, we, need, we need to open that one. I apologize. And what that one does is that just stops the adult villagers from wandering over here and accidentally falling through. But the baby ones that are small enough can actually get through this one block gap. So they'll run off in this direction. Now what I need to do is I need to work on this farm a little bit just to bring this side up to the aesthetically pleasing way that this side is brought up. Yeah, so I'm going to get on that. So now this end looks in place. I've got most of it in place. The only thing that I haven't bothered to do is I haven't bothered to put in the window here because this is where I'm going to lure the villagers inside from. And this side, yeah, we can put in the window. I've put it in the window panes. We just need to, hello, 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 little friend. You're making me very hungry now. I don't like that. I like being fully saturated, especially when I'm only on 19 health. 19 little, little ham bars. No, 19 steaks. That's what I'm working for. Jeez, words. Oh, I added some chests to the inside of our home, by the way. We've got more chests. Now, with these in place, I think the next step is to start getting a couple of villagers in here. Getting them breeding up. And so we've got something to work with. We do need to funnel these into a new place. But I do want to get the hard task out of the way first. And that is by going ahead and finding a village. So... How do we find a village in Minecraft? Well, it's really quite easy. We can wander around. Sure, we can. Or we can use a website. If you caught the last episode, guys, I use a website called Chunkbase. It allows me to view a village. And I'll show you exactly how that works right now. So all the information that we are going to need is on screen. And I'm going to transcribe all of this for you guys so you can break it down and understand it on how to find a village. Because it's really, really easy. First things first, we need to find our seed, which is easily done by just coming into the game, pressing the T button to open the chat, that's this little thing down here, clicking slash seed. And what that'll do is that'll put our seed up on the screen. We can press T again and we can click on our seed to copy that. And then we can head on over to the website that is linked in the description down below, right here. We can click apps and what that'll do is that'll show us all of these apps, what we can do with our seed. We want a village, so we're going to click village. I think I accidentally clicked. Up, nope, it's on village. That's good. We can paste in our seed here, and it's going to load up our world right here and show us all of the different villages. We've got loads of villages here that we can choose from, but which one is closest to us? So what I'm going to do? Head on back into Minecraft, as you can see here, and I'm going to look at my coordinates, and they are negative seven three eight and negative eighty five. So I'm going to take those back over to chunk base right over here and type them in so it was negative 738 and negative 85 i did realize that i missed a negative off right here and then once i do i can click go and we can see all of the villagers around us right here so i think i'm going to pick the village that is closest to me which seems to be this one right here and i'm going to head on over there 
This is quite a trek away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a tunnel in the nether to this. And I'll show you how you can do that once I've got it done. But what you want to do first of all is just take a note of the villager's location. And we can see from here that our village location is right there. We can see that it is 603 by negative 409. And then what we're going to do is we're going to divide those by 8. And I'll show you more about that in just a moment. But I'm going to set up how these portals will work. And how we can transfer villagers from this village to Anne. Without having to trips across about a thousand blocks. Well I derped guys. I started to set up the nether portals. I broke my nether portal down here. I put my new one up. Up in the ceiling where we're going to make our nether hub. And I completely forgot to get myself. Air flint and steel. So I don't have any way of getting back out of the nether other than to simply jump to my death. And I thought this is going to be another death. Maybe we can catch this death on camera while we're going for it. Let's let's do that. I have nothing but uh, not the way that I wanted to go. Wanted to drown in lava. But uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that was the thing. This time, I'm going to remember my flint and steel. So the first thing that we need to do to be able to traverse large portions of the land is utilize the nether. Because for every one block we travel in the nether, we actually travel eight in the overworld. So the first thing that I've done is I've dug all the way up to the ceiling. We're not far off of bedrock right here. If I go up, you guys can see that we will eventually hit bedrock. It's just a nice place to travel in the nether. A lot less, poor, a lot, a lot less puddles of lava, but you do face the odd cavern here and there. And I've set up this brand new nether portal. This should link us to the nether portal in the library. Now, how do I know that? Well, you see, for every block in the overworld that we travel, we travel, sorry, every block in the nether that we travel, we travel one in the overworld. So, I've got the nether, core, the nether portal coordinates of the overworld, which are at negative 754, negative 73. I've divided those by 8 to get myself negative 9 to 5 and negative 10, roughly. And that's exactly where this portal has been placed. So, if I go ahead and I step through this portal, there we go. We are now linked to our nether portal here. So, all I need to do is I need to take those coordinates of the village, which were positive 603, negative 409, divide them by 8 and go to that location in the nether and stick another nether portal up. And then, once I step through that portal, we should be in the village. So, I'm going to get on that. So, with a little bit of luck, we'll be able to go through this portal and get ourselves to the village. Here's open fingers, are crossed, guys. Oh, look at that. We ended up not just in the village or near the village. We ended up literally right on the front doorstep. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and transport these villagers about. So... Uh, the question is, can I get you, sir, can I get you in a boat? I can. Can I get in this boat with you? Yes. Off we go, sir. So, all I gotta do is I gotta transport, oh, I literally cannot get him up half a block. Okay, I need to get this guy in that portal somehow. I'm gonna get them there. One way or another, this boat is going back home. So I finally got the villagers all in place. They're there. They're chatting. We got the farmer villager. He's working away. He's making up some carrots. He's farming away. This guy doesn't... They, they talk every so often. As of yet, we haven't had a baby produced. But it's only been a few minutes and the farm isn't finished yet anyway. So I imagine that there's still things that we haven't done correctly. Now, one thing that I did make a mistake on is I put this one block out. So that's just to go right up against the dirt. So I've had to push these trap doors back a block. And then the next bit that we need to do is we need to make a little funnel here. About six blocks in length. So we've got one, two blocks there. Three, four, five, and six. So if we do that and then we come over here, we should be able to get ourselves this here. Now we need to make sure that the babies can't escape here. So I'm going to just build this up too high for now. 
But this isn't a hole that we need to do. There is a little bit more to this that we need to do. And I'm going to get to doing that. We've got to put in some sort of water stream. We've got to put in another building. But we got a little bit more to do on this. But I just wanted to show you guys how far away it needs to be. I don't know if this is an exact science, but this is what he says in his video. So this is what I'm sticking with. Six is the goal number. Oh, 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 oh. Love hearts, love hearts. Uh, I don't think that, that was a breed. I think one of them wanted to breed, but the other one did not. Maybe these two aren't compatible. Let's just go back up here and see if we can see a little baby running around in there. No, 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 no. Looks like conditions aren't right for breeding just yet. Maybe they need to be a little bit happier. I don't know. I don't know what the what the uh, conditions are. I did actually accidentally clonk one of the villagers when I was bringing him in here. So maybe he's mad and won't breed because of that. Maybe I have to go get two more. But either way, I'm going to get some more work done. Well, guys, I made some work and I've got a bit of a room put together right here. And I want to show you guys how this is all working right here. Because you can hear it, we do have a baby villager. I've been scratching my head for quite some time as to why this farm wasn't working. Because when I made this, this farm just was not working for whatever reason. But I took out these blocks right here. And that means that these can now see the bed a bit more clearly. Whereas when these blocks were there, they couldn't see the beds. I think that's what was happening here. I'm not entirely sure. But when I took these blocks out, they started breeding. And now we've got a baby right here in the system. With a sand block. He looks like he's uh, going to be a nitwit. Because he's got the green coat on. But I've never seen a baby villager. Well not since the old style villagers. So hopefully he'll grow up and end up in here. Now we do need to do some work on this. And I don't know exactly what's going to prevent these guys from breeding again. So I need to build up a bit of a thing around here. But before I do that guys I want to show you exactly what I've done. To make this work. We've got four beds right here. And these pillars are facing the villagers. Villagers will register these as beds. And what that will mean is that they can breathe. They can see the beds. Uh, I think before when I had these blocks here. They could only see one of these beds. So they thought that there actually wasn't enough room for the baby villager. And thus they couldn't breed anymore. That's what I think. So I was getting the love heart effects. And I was getting the angry particles. So hopefully they start breeding up now a little bit more. But, this is what I've done. We've got a water system down here. Down there we've got a uh, fence. When he grows up, he'll be able to clip this water stream right here. Which will mean that he will be able to float up here and end up in here. Now, the video that I, that, um, I linked in the description does have a minecart collection system. But, I'm not going to be using that. I'm just going to be funneling these guys into a drop point. Uh, that's fine by me. I don't really care too much for the minecart system. I just want to have some villagers available to me. So I need to I need to do some more work on this. I need to make sure that these villagers are still willing to breed when it comes to building this building around it. Because I definitely don't want this out in the open. This looks horrible. So I need to find something that I can put over here. And hopefully they'll still breed. So I'm going to get some more work done. We got four babies. We got four babies. Oh my god. They're breeding. We got babies. Babies for days. Well, the villager breeder is up and running, but this guy has taken it upon himself to go wandering around the village. I mean, jeez, he's become a fisherman. I have no idea why he's become a fisherman. I don't think I have the fisherman workstation anywhere unless the fisherman workstation is a barrel. Why he's chosen to become... Ha! Yes, go in there. Now you are safe and trapped. I actually want one in there so that I can make myself a... Um, Librarian or whatnot, so that I could get myself some mending books. But anyway, guys, this is mostly the final design. What do you guys think? I don't know if I show you these. I put these on at the bottom here just to make this stand out a little bit more. We've also added in this structure around here. This one here, I've tried to make it feel kind of grandiose, and I do like the fact that this is kind of crowded. It's not as cramped in this area as I'd like. It kind of opens up a little bit here. So we might have to put some. Like little, I don't know, maybe a library stall out here or something. I definitely want to add a couple of trees in here to break out this. Because I can't really add stairs or windows here. I don't want to touch this just in case this breaks this farm. Because you plant too many blocks near the farm. It, it tends to disrupt the farm, but it seems to be working. I don't have my skin. I like an Alex. I've not got my skin. What happened to my skin? Oh, that must be a problem with the internet. My internet's been up and down all day. But yeah, so... We've got this in place here. This side looks really, really good. This side looks really good too. We've got this side over here. This is what the side looks like. The back side, which obviously is the nicer side. 
There's this big giant window and this is something that I've done on purpose. When it comes to that giant window, it's too wide if you noticed. And if you paid attention, the doors to this building are also too wide. Now I normally go on a one wide door just simply because it's easy you walk through a one, blank, one wide gap. So it just makes it a little bit more easier. But when I was transporting villagers, I did notice that boats, what is going to be my primary source for transporting villagers, don't actually go through a one block gap. They need two blocks to go through. So we've got two blocks here just so that I can portray them, uh, get them in and out. Yes, we could use minecart, but I don't have the iron. Boats seem the simplest thing, and I doubt that I'm going to be using these that often. I just pretty much want myself some uh, farmer villagers to go ahead and trade some good things with to try and get some emeralds. I also just want enough villagers there so that I can make myself an iron farm in the near future. And I also want enough villagers so that I can go ahead and get myself some mending books. But I'm not going to be doing like a giant trading all anytime soon, I don't think. So I don't really think I'm going to need a good way to get these in and out. This way works perfectly fine, but I'll show you guys how this works. We've got um, iron double doors in here, but we have to be careful. Sometimes they uh, they run through them if we're not quick enough. And they're to stop the villagers going there. Because villagers, if they tried to get through those doors, they'd be able to. They can open regular doors. They can't open iron doors. But I can also put just like a lever or a redstone torch there to open them if I need to, to get them out of here. But right now we've got four here. And uh, I don't know if we've got any more in the system. Yes, we have a couple more in the system breeding up here. And I did change the design a little bit. Like I said, I was going to uh, make this design my own, which I kind of have done. It's not entirely my own, guys, and I'm not claiming this design as mine. But I just put my own spin on things, which is what I like to do. I like to make my own sort of little adjustments and hope and kind of pray that they work out the way that I want them to. And this time it has done. So we got four here plus the one that's gone rogue on us. And I think that that's going to be plenty enough for what I need. You know, these guys are all not got a job yet. The none of them are nitwits. I figured out why these guys have these dresses on them. It's because we're in the desert biome. Of course, they're they're more desert themed. And that's, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. But yeah. So I've got pretty much everything set up in this episode that I wanted to do. Which was this village breeder. And I'm really, really happy with it. Like I said. Don't want to mess with this too much, so I'm going to put some trees here just to break up this here. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. It definitely fits the aesthetics that I'm going for. And we've definitely got that sort of like crowding area around here. I think what I want to do is I want to maybe add a road going here with a bit of more farmland on either side of this. But I don't know. I think, I think we'll worry about that a little bit later on. For right now, I think I'm going to call it here, guys. Because this episode is over length. So, if you've enjoyed the video... Please do consider leaving a like. It really helps our channel. I really do appreciate it. So please do leave that like. And click subscribe if you want to see more from me, guys. In case you want to thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.